Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Alessandro Budroni. Um, I'm going to present our, our work together with uh, Igor Semaev uh, with the name um, A New Trapdoor Construction for LWE and um, EHT Crypto System. So let's start uh, with the introduction uh, to the research field, which is uh, lattice based cryptography. So, this is um, a well known and promising research field in post quantum cryptography. One of the reasons is because uh, it has been shown that you can create many cryptographic applications using uh, lattices, such as uh, key encapsulation methods, uh, digital signatures, and etc. Um, if, for example, if you look at the NIST uh, post quantum standardization pro process uh, uh, now at round three, uh, four, uh, out of four uh, candidates that were accepted, the two are based on um, uh, lattice, lattices. So, um, so this is an important research area. Um, the learning with error problems is one of the main computation, hard, hard computational problems in, uh, in lattice-based uh, cryptography. So let's see it quickly. Uh, there are two integers, m and n, and a pair, a and b, where a is a rectangular matrix, uh, and uh, b is a vector that is equal to a times s plus e modulo q, where s is a random secret, uh, and the E is a error vector. That is, uh, the entries are sampled according, according to a certain distribution that uh, makes it small, so with uh, small entries. Uh, usually the distribution we use is the discrete Gaussian distribution over integers. So the search uh, LWE problem, so the search version of the problem is given a, a pair AB, find S. So the decision version instead is uh, given a pair in B, decide whether this was uh, sampled uniformly at random or it is actually an LWE pair with above parameters. So now I'm going to introduce um, a framework, a very general framework for uh, trapdoors on uh, LWE. So first uh, I have to talk about um, the concept of uh, gadget matrix. So a gadget matrix is a matrix uh, G such that uh, uh, the LW, an LW problem defined on the matrix so that uses G as a public matrix, it's easy to solve. In other words, uh, that there, is a, there exists a polynomial time algorithm that allows to recover the secret and the error. Um, so next I'm going to introduce the definition of uh, the trapdoor on LWE. So for a parity check matrix A, a trapdoor is a uh, a short uh, integer matrix C, an invertible matrix B, and uh, a gadget matrix G, such that we have uh, this relation, C times A is equal to G times B, modulo Q. And this relation, we will see it uh, later many times during my talk. So it's, it's the, I will refer to it as the trapdoor uh, equation. So how can we use uh, this uh, equation to uh, revert the NLW problem? So assume that uh, we want to solve um, B equal to A times S uh, plus E. And by solve, I mean, assume we want to find the secret. So what we do, we multiply times C, the matrix, the, the short matrix C in uh, both sides of the equation. Then uh, we substitute C A with uh, G B. So according to the equation of the um, trapdoor, and then we make a change of uh, names. So we call uh, C times B, we call it Z. Um, B times S, uh, we call it uh, S bar, so it's the new secret. C times E, we call it E bar, the new uh, error. And then we obtained a new LWE problem where uh, the public matrix is G, is the gadget matrix, so it is easy to solve. And therefore, um, we can, um, then, and therefore, we have a polynomial, we can solve it in polynomial times. We are, one has to be careful that uh, the distribution of uh, the new error. It depends on uh, how short is uh, C. In particular, if the rows of C have a uh, norm lambda and the, er the standard deviation of the error is uh, sigma, then the final uh, standard deviation will be, will be lambda times sigma. So we can, again, we can solve it with a uh, polynomial time. And uh, once we found uh, S bar, we can uh, retrieve uh, S by simply multiplying uh, S bar times uh, the inverse of B. So this is why B has to be invertible. And this is how your the, the trapdoor on LWE works in general. 
So in 2012, in Chancho and Pakert, um, they introduced um, a trapdoor for uh, LWE that uh, falls into this uh, framework and so on. In particular, they defined um, the matrix A as a composition of uh, a random matrix A, G that is a gadget, ma gadget matrix, and B minus uh, uh, a short matrix times around the random matrix. And C is defined as a composition of a uh, short matrix and, and um, the identity. So also C in general is uh, short. And then one has that C times A is equal to G times B. The, the gadget matrix is defined as um, uh, the um, tensoral product of uh, the identity and the, a vector G made by um, power of two. Uh, this, uh, this is actually a particular case for when Q, the modulo, is um, a power of two, but it can be adapted for a general Q. Um, so this was the, uh, it's, it's like a, a work that has been exploited to, by many other researchers to build uh, uh, protocols and, and applications. So our trapdoor is uh, a bit different. Uh, again, for a matrix A, uh, a trapdoor in Nor Norway is uh, uh, we want a, a square and invertible matrix uh, C that has to be short. So compared to the previous um, construction, uh, we want C to be square. And then uh, um, a random and invertible matrix B and a gadget matrix G that can be of one of the following two forms, where the white uh, uh, part is uh, zeros and the red uh, part is like a ladder diagonal uh, is uh, a random values. And um, the difference between the choice of two have implications in security, I will mention a little bit later, and also in, uh, in the decryption uh, inverse algorithm to retrieve the secret. Um, in particular, the first case can be parallelized uh, better, uh, and uh, I will uh, assume we choose the first kind. And then, of course, we want the relation C A is equal to G B modulo Q. So how to build uh, such kind of trapdoors? Uh, the first approach is the following. So we pick a parameter lambda that is the norm of the rows of C, the, the short matrix C, and C is built as a sparse matrix with entries at zero, plus uh, one, and minus one. And there are exactly uh, lambda square uh, entries different uh, from zero in each row. And also we want that uh, for statistical reasons, we want also that um, the dot products between the rows is uh, approximately zero. And then one can compute A equal to C minus one times G times B. And uh, then A and C, G and B, they, they respect the, um, the trapdoor equation. However, this approach has a drawback that uh, C is, uh, um, is uh, very expensive to invert because uh, it's, uh, uh, we use gas elimination, but uh, C is um, it's quite a big matrix, so it, it, it's low. So uh, second idea uh, to overcome this problem is to build C as follows. So we have two permutation matrices, P and Q, and then we have uh, another matrix, which is the tensorial product of uh, an Hadamard matrix and uh, the identity. And then by exploiting the properties of Hadamard matrices uh, and permutation matrices, which are all easy to invert, we can invert uh, C quickly and easily. And also we have the fact, the nice property, that uh, since the rows of H are orthogonal, then also the rows of um, C are orthogonal. Uh, drawback of this approach is that uh, we found out it's not secure for the first choice of the gadget matrix, but uh, it seems to be still secure for the second choice. Uh, at least we believe so. Uh, now I'm going to introduce the, like, or a new inversion algorithm. So our algorithm that works with um, our uh, construction. So uh, let's consider directly the LW problem on the gadget matrix. Uh, so we want to find uh, the secret S bar and we know that uh, once we have S bar, we can compute uh, the original secret. So uh, we uh, use a statistical approach, approach. For each uh, entry of S bar, we define a statistic um, that is the sum um, of the logarithm of Q times a probability. The probability is that a certain value that uh, varies according to the input to the statistics, uh, uh, and this value corresponds to the, um, to the error, to the, new, the error E bar, the entries of the error E bar. So 
or uh, uh, for the case of uh, a a can be from can go from zero to q minus one so we try them all for a equal to uh, s uh, i bar so for when we have the right guess then uh, uh, this uh, value inside the parenthesis uh, uh, follows um, like we'll take values as a discrete Gaussian distribution so we, because it corresponds to the error when uh, S i bar is different from a, it will take values as a uniform distribution. So in this way, we can distinguish uh, the entries of, um, uh, of uh, S i bar. And um, in particular, we select, we select the right the value uh, when uh, the statistic takes positive, uh, a positive value. This, uh, since we act on different entries of, um, of the secret, this algorithm uh, is parallelizable, it's fully parallelizable. And of course, as I said before, uh, we can complete the inversion of the algorithm. Once we have S bar, we can compute S, and once we have S, we can compute E, the, the error. Uh, we analyzed uh, the inversion of failure, failure probability. In particular, there are two cases. There is a ca the case when we refuse the correct uh, guess, and the, the case when we accept a false positive. Um, so we will give uh, uh, concrete formulas uh, for to uh, evaluate these failure probabilities, and um, and we work uh, like we we evaluate them as follows. So first, we approximate uh, the discrete Gaussian distribution with the uh, uh, continuous Gaussian distribution. And this is uh, something uh, that is usually done in uh, in our field, and then the statistic takes this expression. Uh, with this approximation. Then we make a change of variable and we call uh, sigma all the constant part of the formula. And then uh, the condition that uh, uh, S, uh, I, uh, S i of a must be larger than zero is equivalent to the condition that the sum of this new random variable xj is smaller than uh, this constant value delta square. So for the first case, that is uh, correct guess, but we refuse it. Uh, we know that uh, the random variables, the x1, uh, xk, they behave uh, as a uh, Gaussian, the Gaussian distribution, Gaussian distributed variables. Uh, therefore, we can estimate the success probability by exploiting a property of the Gaussian distribution, that is the sum can be um, approximated with a chi-square variable with k degrees of uh, freedom. And we call this probability beta. So this is the success probability for one uh, that we, we get a success uh, upon the right uh, guess uh, for one entry. Since we are uh, dealing with uh, n entries and we want uh, this to happen in all entries, uh, at the same time we rise uh, the probability to the power of n, and we call this probability beta one. Therefore, this, the success probability is beta one. The failure probability is one minus uh, beta one, and therefore we have uh, our formula. For the second case, uh, so for a wrong guess, we get uh, that the statistic takes positive uh, uh, values, so we accept it even if it's wrong. Uh, then uh, we do the following. So we, we know that uh, x1, xk are um, uh, distributed according um, a uniform distribution when the guess is wrong. And um, so uh, we can approximate uh, um, the probability that to accept it as uh, uh, the probability that uh, the value of the statistics uh, falls into a k ball of ratio delta uh, in, inside the space. So it's, we have the ratio of the volume of the ball uh, over the total, and then uh, we have our probability alpha. Uh, this uh, um, has to happen to all the entries and also may happen to at least one entries, let's say. So we multiply it times n. And also it may happen for any of the possible values we evaluate the statistics A. So we multiply it times uh, Q values. And then alpha one is our second. Um, so we have the formula also for the second case. So we verified experimentally these two formulas. Essentially, we ran a lot of decryptions, and then we, we counted how many times we encountered one or the other kind of failures. And then we can see from this plot that uh, the theoretical estimates that is in red uh, fits well the, um, 
the experimental results, which is the black line. Um, then finally, uh, I'm going to talk about applications uh, of uh, this trapdoor. So trapdoors in general are used to build many applications. And here we present a public crypto system called um, EHT. It means uh, error hidden uh, trapdoors. Um, it is a proof of concept. So in this presentation is going to be quite basic. And then um, it is also the, one of the goals is to show that uh, the inversion algorithm is uh, fast, it can be parallelized, and it's actually practical. Uh, the encryption uh, of the crypto system uh, uh, works uh, like it's quite trivial. Then you have the, you have the public key matrix A, and the plain test is the secret. Then you sample an error, and you compute the LW equation, and B is going to be the ciphertext. The decryption, uh, you use uh, the trapdoor CGB, uh, so if first you turn the problem uh, into the uh, an LWE on the gadget, then you invert uh, LWE with the gadget matrix, and then you retrieve the original secret, that is the plain text. Um, so we implemented uh, this algorithm in C, and uh, we run uh, many experiments. This is one of them. In this experiment in particular, we run 10,000 decryptions um, many times, but uh, each time with a different number um, of cores, of course. And then um, for one core, you can see the time it takes 33 seconds for 10,000 decryptions. For two cores, the time is almost half. And then it keeps decreasing, but uh, less. This is because the, um, the part of the, the, uh, the inversion algorithm that goes on a single core, and also uh, the time the machine takes to delegate the job to the many different cores uh, is more relevant. And uh, anyway, it is, uh, we can see that uh, it's actually quite fast. Like for example, with four cores, it takes, for one um, decryption, it takes 0.001 seconds. Uh, this parameter, the parameters we use have an LWE uh, security estimated according to the last, most recent uh, sieving attacks, uh, are, uh, have a security of uh, 192 bits. So I'm done with the presentation. Uh, thanks for listening.